Hi everyone and welcome back to the workshop. As you can see, we've got a couple of CRT televisions on the bench today, but what we're actually working on is this box right down here that's producing the pattern that you're seeing on these screens. This is a LASPI TT03. It's a Soviet-made pattern generator. As you can see, it's working. This is not a repair video, but it does need some maintenance, and I'm hoping that we can also make a few upgrades to make it a little more workbench friendly. So thanks a lot for coming along for the ride, and let's get into it. Okay, here's what we're working with today. As you can see, we've got um, a number of controls here, PAL and CCAM button, a couple different pattern buttons here, and then a number of patterns for color televisions. These don't apply to us because we're working with black and white. It's pretty dirty, it's seen some use. I noticed that this instrument cluster, this control cluster is loose, so that needs some attention. We're missing a slider knob there, and it looks like this guy might be, have been melted at some point. You can see it's kind of, it's not, uh, it's not doing very well right there. This must be the factory seal here. I like seeing this. This is a, most likely a artifact from a soldering gun that was left here, a soldering iron. So you can tell that this belonged to a professional, which is pretty cool. So here's the back. Uh, we've got video. Um, VHF, UHF, I don't know what mode and ni mode means, and I'm not sure what this means. The fuse is obviously good because it's working, so hopefully we can get some answers on this. I have seen some pictures of this unit where these were modified to be RCA jacks, though this did come with the cables that is, goes from this connector to RCA, so I don't think I need to do that right now. But I'll tell you one thing that's missing is there's no on-off switch. So I'm thinking we might add an on-off switch right around here, because who wants to plug something in every time you have to use it? I, I want this to sit on my workbench and I flick a switch and it's ready to go. So if there's space for that, we'll try to add that. Right off the bat, I can see that we've got some, a lot of work has been done on this. This whole section has been soldered on. It's a lot of bodge wires here. This whole, this is a heat sink. A lot of solder on this thing. This board also has a few solder spots. So this thing's had a lot of repair over the years. But, I mean, it was owned by a technician, so we have to assume that they fixed their own things, which is nice. Okay guys, we're in. Here we go. Here's our main transformer. This must be our main filter cap. This has clearly been replaced at some point. That's not a Soviet capacitor. Beautiful Soviet boards as usual. Everything spaced out well. Okay, I'm looking at the date code on this capacitor. It looks like March of 1993. I believe that's a 9303. So that would make sense. Right after the Soviet Union fell, but everybody's still using Soviet parts. June of 1989. Okay, that makes sense. That tracks with everything else here. But check out these boards, just gorgeous. And you know what? I don't see any problems here. I don't see any, I don't see anything amiss. So here's the back of that main control board that was loose. And I think this is just gonna be a case of needing to tighten this screw down in here. So I think that's an easy fix. I wanted to put a power switch right here but if I come over here and look, I can see now that there's not a place for that because there is, um, looks like we've got a, a pot here in the back, but there's just no place to mount a switch. So maybe, maybe the answer is that we put that on the other side over here. It's not quite as graceful. I mean, it'd be nice if it was next to the power lights, but I'll take what I can get. So maybe we can get away with it here or in line with these buttons. I'm having a lot of trouble finding a good place for this switch. Uh, over here, there's an instrument panel in the way. Over here, the chassis is in the way. All right, guys, so I think this is the only option really available to us. So I think we're gonna put this switch right down here. And uh, I mean, it's not ideal, but let's do it. Let's get to work. Oh, 
This is a really thick piece of metal. So I'm gonna put a little dab of cutting fluid on here, just to sort of help with this. Okay, here's that switch all wired up. Got red and blue going, one coming from the AC line, one going to the fuse. And on the front, not bad. Would have been probably nicer if it was a Soviet switch, but didn't have a good one for this. So, moving on. Next up is I want to take a look at these knobs that are, this one's melted, this one's just ugly. Let's see if we can find a replacement for these. That's too big. Hello. Matching pair. Appears to be the right size. Let's see if this works. These aren't perfect, but they are improvements over the gross knobs that we had before. We're going to go with that. Okay, look what we're missing here. Let's see what we got. I just happen to have this guy, which I think will fit perfectly with a little dab of glue. Okay guys, this is a pretty short video, but uh, I think it's been successful. So I've got Old Faithful here powered up, and we're gonna reach over and turn on our last bee. So we can do it when you see the light. And there's our pattern. It does have a switch for PAL and CCAM. Uh, Soviet Union ran on CCAM as far as I know. This switch does nothing when I turn it on and off. We do have another pattern here. This pattern right here. I'd be very interested in knowing what the history of this pattern is. It's kind of unique. I haven't seen this pattern before. Uh, then this got a number of color bars, as you can see here. Um, I guess th this is kind of useful for black and white because you can see the gradations for contrast. And then here's sort of more traditional, oops. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> I think she's all right now. I am so happy to have this tool because I really didn't have anything that could do this. This can live on the workbench. This is very convenient. Now we've got a forward facing switch so it can just stay there and hibernate. And when I need it, I flip a switch, plug in the cable that I need and uh, that's it, so I'm really happy to have this. It's not as high tech as some of the equipment I see on a lot of the CRT restoration channels that I follow, but for my purposes, as someone who's a hobbyist just kind of getting into this, it's perfectly acceptable, and I know that it works on these old Soviet TVs. That's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for coming along, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.